Okay, um, so we already understand that uh, water is uh, attracted towards the solid interface of soil due to the greater density of soil. So therefore, the, the, that's why the capillary rise uh, of water is occurred in the weather zone. Okay, so next. Okay, um, this is a laboratory um, representation, uh, laboratory representation on uh, what is actually looks like um, in the soil grain of soil, in the soil grain and the uh, uh, water uh, react to the soil. So as I mentioned before, um, in the laboratory, uh, we consider a capillary tube. We consider a capillary tube, maybe a solid of material, maybe a glass, uh, which has a much more higher density compared to water. So that's why uh, there's a surface uh, attra attraction force, a tension surface of water with a uh, alpha angle. And uh, from there, we can uh, develop an, an equation to calculate the capillary rise. We can calculate the capillary rise. But if we want to know uh, in the soil, so let's say we have a uh, few uh, soil particles or soil grains. So we know... Um, Water is uh, a lot in a saturated zone. Okay, uh, when we have a weather zone, weather zone. So uh, due to the density, different density of water and the soil particle, that's why they seep or they rise into the uh, uh, between the gaps between the uh, solids and attracted to the solids. So that's why it rise. And uh, the smaller of the soil grain, uh, the higher the capillary rise can go in general. Uh, the smaller the, small, uh, the, the soil grains, the higher the capillary rise can go uh, because the surface uh, tension uh, attracted more to, to their surface. Okay, next. Mm. So in weather zone, uh, there's a way to, to calculate the height, the height of the capillary rise, height of uh, C, HC, height of capillary rise. So as we know that the tension uh, of the attractive force um, and we know the properties of the unit weight of water, uh, we assume the alpha in the soil grain is zero, uh, and um, usually we we'll, we can obtain the effective size at D10 uh, from the sieve analysis. Yeah? If you still remember, uh, particle sieve, uh, particle size distribution, we plot the graph uh, from zero percent to one hundred percent. So at at the D10, so we can obtain uh, what the smallest size, the effective size of the soil. And uh, we also need to know the void ratio, the void ratio of the soil. So by calculating the the capital uh, uh, in the this equation, uh, four my uh, times the tension uh, force uh, alpha. Uh, alpha is zero, cos alpha, uh, and then effective size uh, with the water ratio times the gamma water. So in uh, approximate, we can get the uh, equation of the height, uh, capillary height is equal to thirty uh, divided to the effective uh, stress and also the water ratio. Okay, um, in, in estimation by Tazaki and Peck, Tazaki and Peck, a researcher, 
uh, researchers. Um, so they include the grading and shape characteristic characteristic of the soil, such as irregularity, irregularity and flakiness. If you st if you still remember in soil classification, we see the the flaky shape of the soil or clay uh, that stick together. They have a lot of um, area in them. Okay, uh, so they uh, assume, uh, due to this assumption, they adopt the C value, the coefficient value, that previously calculated as 30, but they, they um, take a broad uh, range of C uh, between 10 and 40 millimeter uh, square. So anything between uh, 10 to 40 can be assumed as a value of C, but usually we can also strictly take 30 mm squared divided uh, by the effective uh, uh, by the water ratio and also effective uh, size of the soil grain. Okay, note that uh, C is in millimeter per squ uh, millimeter square. So uh, and D10 is in millimeter. So we we will obtain the height of capillary in millimeter. So remember to convert uh, this height into the meter by dividing the 1000 okay um okay this is a diagram showing that um the the effect of particle size uh, the d10 size of uh on uh to the capillary rise so if uh, let's say we have a very small effective size of d10 uh equal to less than 0 0.002 which is usually a clay soil okay so the capillary rise can go up until uh, 10 to the power of 4 maybe uh, around 1 meter uh, so, and the 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 coarser the grain size goes the lesser the capillary rise uh, uh, occurred okay? so if we have a gravel and sand so the capillary rise is much more lesser compared to the to the clay and silt. Uh, okay. So um, see, so what happened when the capillary rise occurred? So usually when the we have a capillary rise, uh, one thing uh change uh is in pore water pressure where uh, instead of we have an only positive region but when we have a capillary rise uh, 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 the upper region uh, after the uh, ground table oh. Okay, uh, the upper region of the water table um, can have a negative pore water pressure. And negative pore water pressure can be calculated by using a negative gamma water times the height of capillary rise. Uh, and how many percent of the saturation? How many percent of the saturation? All these together factor can be, uh, can, can, um, can give the negative pore water pressure magnitude. And similarly, when we have a difference in the pore water pressure, of course, uh, as the we know the effective stress is closely related to the pore pressure and also the total stress. So when the uh, pore pressure is changed, uh, there's also a changes in the effective stress. So in this case, is uh, in this uh, example, it's showing um, effective stress is increased. In general, our uh, effective stress is increasing. Eh? Okay. Um. For more uh, on the zero effective stress and capillary rise, uh, you also can surf uh, uh, or stream a video from a uh, YouTube uh, that prepared uh, by others lecturer. Okay, uh, so I just want to share with you uh, one and uh, one or two example on the capillary rise problem. So let's say um, this is example one 
on top layer rice. So we have a dry sand, we have a silty sand, but with a uh, capillary rice in here, uh, they give you uh, how much the saturation occurred, uh, and also groundwater table and gamma saturated for the soil below the groundwater table. So first and foremost, of course, of course, you have to calculate the uh, height of capillary water height of capillary rise uh, if you are not given any um, uh, any value of effective stress uh, or of the effective size of D10 or uh, what ratio D10 and E so easily just take uh, the diagram as your benchmark so this diagram showing you the height of capillary is uh, full uh, in the sea soil le level so you can take height of capillary here as a 0 0.5 as a 0 0.5 okay um, so once you know that the height of capillary is 0 0.5 meter in here so you just need to proceed a, a usual uh, calculation erase this first okay um, so proceed to calculate um, the total stress uh, pore pressure and also the effective stress okay. uh, so you calculate the, the total stress in here uh, of course 0 and here is 18 times 1 and here add some more 18 plus 1 uh, 18 times 1 plus 19 um, times 0 0.5 and here for D you get uh, you add some more for the gamma 22 times 2 meter and for the pore pressure so for the pore pressure so maybe you want to have a line on top so for pore pressure so this is where the height of capillary rise so you have to prepare um, a diagram and you start to calculate the u equal to uh, negative gamma w times the uh, height H equal to 0 0.5 and also the saturate, saturation degree. Uh, 50% uh, so you have to you have to note 50 uh, over 100. So you will get the negative pore water pressure here. Get the negative value here. And uh, here is uh, equal to 0 again due to the ground water level. And as a usual, usual um, uh, calculation you have to calculate 9.81 times 2 so you will, so you will get another positive pore water pressure in here and then you proceed to the effective stress which is um, we want to plot in here so follow the uh, usual uh, equation 0 here and then uh, at here is uh, um, total stress minus the uh, negative pore water pressure so once is uh, minus uh, merging to the minus so it become plus so you have two two value here first is the initial value comes from this uh, this layer and another adding uh, adding line a straight line that equal to the uh, to the calculation that you uh, do due to the negative pore pressure and then you continue to calculate for the C and D so you can try for this uh, another example uh, that give you the value of uh, H, C, S and also you can calculate for the rest of the Calculations.